A disruption in the supply chain can spell disaster for any manufacturer. I'm sure you can think of a time when the supply chain let you down. Maybe a company that you outsource your prototyping and tool building to went out of business. And now this type of work done elsewhere is going to cost you a lot more. Or much needed raw materials got delayed in shipping, resulting in downtime at your facility. While these scenarios are common, they don't happen to everyone all at once. Until they do. Events like the COVID-19 pandemic obliterated the stability of the pre-existing supply chain. Then in 2021, just when things were showing signs of stabilizing, one of the largest container ships in the world gets stuck in the Suez Canal, costing the world $400 million an hour. Catastrophic global events like these have exposed the dangerous fragility of the supply chain. And in response, manufacturers have built robust contingency plans one item that has appeared again and again in these plans is 3D printing. Having the ability to produce strong parts in-house, fully automated, without expensive tooling or outsourcing, and to do all of this at a reasonable cost without needing highly skilled labor is enough winning to make Charlie Sheen blush. You know, good luck, you're gonna need it. I'm gonna be over here like winning. And because of its availability, cost, and lower barrier to entry, FFF 3D printing was the primary technology. FFF stands for Fused Filament Fabrication because it uses thermoplastic filament that is heated and extruded through a small nozzle, deposited onto a build platform, and then cooled to a hardness that is suitable as a substrate for the next layer. There are also motion systems to allow the nozzle to trace out the shape that comprises any specific layer. Common materials include PLA, which is the most commonly printed plastic and an excellent prototyping material. PTG, easy to print like PLA, but features more durability and is UV stable. And ABS, which is great for functional parts and one of the most common industrial thermoplastics. Other materials like flexibles such as TPU and extremely strong materials like polycarbonate and carbon fiber filled nylons are also commonly encountered. Preparing parts for printing is an easy process. Whereas G-code generation for a CNC mill is a highly skilled manual task, the G-code for 3D printers is automatically produced from a slicer. The slicer is a type of software that accepts a 3D file format from your CAD package, like STL, OBJ, or 3MF, and then allows you to choose what printer and material you'll be using, along with your desired layer height and some ancillary parameters. Slicers used by hobby grade FFF printers often feature a huge number of adjustable settings, whereas slicers purpose built for industrial grade printers have been optimized to allow for a more seamless workflow. To understand the main settings, it's important to understand the anatomy of an FFF printed part. First, there's layer height, which intuitively is the height of the extruded layer. That's what gives FFF parts their striated look. The smaller the layer height, the smaller the striations, and thus the smoother the surface at the cost of a bit more print time. FFF parts are often hollow, featuring a lattice structure that helps minimize material usage, speed up print times, and add rigidity. The type of lattice and how hollow the part is can be adjusted in the slicer. Walls create the outer form of the part, and the wall count is defined by U. Roof and floor layers, another adjustable parameter, are solid layers that cap off the part and hide the hollow infill within. Lastly, support material is needed for abrupt overhangs to prevent them from sagging prior to solidifying. It is typically printed in the same material as the part itself and takes the form of a serpentine accordion slightly offset from the overhang to allow for easy removal upon print completion. So let's take a look at why FFF printers remain the most popular 3D printing tech by looking at their benefits. First off, FFF printers are pretty simple, which means they are easy to use and maintain. One reason for this is the technology's age. It was patented in 1989, so it's had a long time to mature and undergo optimization. Plus, modern injection molding was introduced about 40 years before that, so access to a wide variety of robust thermoplastic formulations means more focus could be applied to designing 3D printer mechanics and software rather than material science. This is in stark contrast to SLA and SLS, which while having been patented around the same time, feature complex mechanics and materials, 
resulting in more involved workflows and upkeep. Parallel to simple is low-cost operation. FFF printers have just a few frequently replaced low-cost consumables like nozzles. The filaments are also affordable and waste is low. And the hardware is limited to just a printer, which in and of itself is comparatively inexpensive. This is not so much the case with SLA and SLS printers, which both require secondary post-processing equipment. Since this is not needed with FFF printers, the process of getting parts off the printer and implemented is the fastest of any printer tech, saving you and your business money. If you need strong parts, FFF printers have got you covered. They are capable of printing in the strongest thermoplastics like polycarbonate and peak, and can produce composite parts too. Mark Forged has the patent on continuous fiber reinforcement, which means their printers can lay down continuous strands of carbon fiber, fiberglass, or Kevlar into as many layers of the part as you desire. Combine that with the carbon fiber filled nylon base material and you get stiffness on par with 6061 aluminum. Besides stiffness, there are plenty of FFF plastics that are highly resistant to harsh chemical and thermal environments, as well as UV exposure. FFF printers are commonly used to make tools, tooling, prototypes, robot end effectors, jigs and fixtures, and CNC work holding like soft jaws. These are non-revenue generating parts that are commonly outsourced or made with CNC machines. 3D printing them in-house instead means you free up CNC cells to produce profitable parts, you rid yourself of one or more supply chain dependencies, and you increase design freedom. The latter is unique because 3D printing is an additive technology, so what might be considered a highly complex geometry for a CNC or injection mold operation is dead simple for a 3D printer. 3D printers can make these parts in one piece, they can make them lighter, and even make them stronger. Because of the technology's maturity, FFF printers are extremely abundant and widely available. Some are sold in brick and mortar stores, some have build volumes over one meter cubed, some are enclosed, others are open frame. There are printers that can print parts for other printers, printers that can print in either metal or plastic, some that can print with continuous fibers or ones that use soluble support material, and some have multicolor capabilities. That's a lot of variety, which can be overwhelming. In fact, buying a new piece of equipment can be overwhelming. From your readings about other companies' successes with 3D printing, some of whom may even be your competitors, you know it can help solve your manufacturing challenges, but you're just not sure the best way to go about it. Well, that's where we come in. At MLC CAD Systems, we help folks like you build an additive tool set. The systems we support are the ones we've identified as providing the most value to businesses like yours. By combining an intuitive ecosystem with superior tech support and a robust roadmap to adoption, there's very few applications our printers can't tackle. For more information, feel free to contact us using any of the methods listed here so that you can take on new manufacturing challenges rather than turn them away.